Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection here at First Presbyterian Church on January 4th, 2023. Happy New Year. Hey, oh, hey uh, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here to do what we ordinarily do, and that's read our daily lectionary texts for today, talk about them a little bit, and see what uh, the Lord might have for us. So we're excited to start this new year and uh, looking forward to re-engaging in... What, what has become for us, I think, a, a spiritual discipline in terms of looking at a good number of texts, seeing how they connect with one another, uh, having an opportunity to remember that all of Scripture from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, is a singular story of God's redemptive love for us and how we fit into that story. I think it's just something that we discover day by day. So looking forward to this today. Let me go ahead and say the word, opening word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. We are grateful that you are a good and a loving God, one who remembers that uh, we are mortals, um, that we are created beings, uh, that we have our flaws, uh, but you continue to love us and call us into a closer relationship with you. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to read your word today um, on this first Wednesday of 2023. And I pray, Lord, that we would have open ears to hear from you, and that you would speak to us through your Holy Spirit, and that we would be transformed by the work, the continual work that you are doing through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, we are starting this morning with Psalm 20. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. In the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories in his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our uh, Hebrew scripture text today comes from Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. No, is that right? I think it's right. Yes. Uh, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And from the New Testament, we have Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 31. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, 
choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he, per he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. Our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. And back to our song, Psalm 93. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, he is girded with strength. He has established the world, it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old, you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And our final psalm, Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Well, Happy New Year, right? So, uh, a variety of texts, um, as usual. Uh, the passage from Exodus chapter 3, mm -hmm. obviously it's God revealing himself to Moses in this burning bush. Um, if, if one is not familiar with the story of Exodus, uh, again, we're just from Exodus chapter 3. Uh, go back and read chapters 1 and 2 and check and see how... Uh, God was at work in the lives of the Israelites, how they were enslaved. They were enslaved to the people of Egypt. Uh, Moses is born. Moses gets into Pharaoh's house. Moses ends up leaving Pharaoh's house. Moses goes out into the wilderness. Moses is there uh, for 40 years before this revelation that God makes to him. And what I find interesting in there is Moses is out and about keeping the flock of his father Jethro. 
the angel of the Lord appears. He sees this bush that's on fire, but not consumed. But rather than just continuing on his way, it says Moses turned aside. I must turn aside and look at this great sight. And it says there in verse four, when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside, then God engages with Moses. And it makes me wonder sometimes, I think the Lord, um, obviously this is one of these miracle, miraculous, uh, nation-defining stories, but what would have happened if Moses had just continued to pass by? What if he had even seen God, not knowing it was God, but seeing God, and was so consumed with what he was doing? I, you know, I'm, a, I'm imagining that watching your father-in-law's flocks is an important task, you know, you've got to keep watch over this sheep. You know, you're looking at the different sheep or the goats or whatever it is they're doing. They're going around doing these things. And his eyes are open enough to see something unusual, turn aside to go and investigate. And then the Lord speaks to him. And, and so I think, I don't know, I'm wondering about even today, are, are, our, are our eyes open uh, to see what the Lord might be doing in our lives. Is the Lord uh, revealing things to us, but maybe we're so distracted by the cares of our own daily lives that we don't, assert, we don't turn aside to go investigate what the Lord is doing and therefore miss out on an encounter with God. Right. Um, because, you know, we might be doing important things or ordinary things or, or our normal live things, but as Moses was doing, but there's something about turning aside and going and seeing that he encounters God. Right, and I think that um, that is so true in our lives. And I think that especially the, the busier we seem to get and the more junk that we cram into our schedules, you know, it's, you don't have time. You don't have time, you don't have time. And um, I think that it is a conscious, I mean, it was a conscious thing that Moses did. And so when we're just so busy with the rat race of just one thing to the next, I think it is so easy to miss mm -hmm. things that may be in front of us. And so um, I think that we have to live with some intentionality um, if, if, um, if we are going to see those things in front of us that are mm -hmm. put in front of us. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, you know, if you look back at that John 14 passage, um, you know, Jesus is saying, if you know me, you'll know my father. And, and uh, if you know him, you've seen him. And then Philip's like, well, Lord, show us the father. Right. And so it's that even that, that, uh, that same connected uh, visual command, you know, Moses had to look, Moses had to turn aside. Well, right. Jesus has been revealing himself throughout the entire gospel narrative. And Philip's like, well, just, just show us the Father. And yeah. it's like, Jesus, it's like, have you, have you not, not been, been watching? Looking? Have right. you not been, been watching? Right here it's all along. been right here all along. And so, so in that regard, you know, here we have the disciples of Jesus who obviously left uh, their ordinary lives behind and started following Jesus. Yet even the disciples don't always see that which is right in front of their face. I wonder, in a way, if our own lives of faith can become so routine, can become so ordinary, that we fail to actually recognize what Jesus is doing in our lives. Um, here is Jesus. This is right before his, um, right before his betrayal, right before that passion that he suffers uh, on our behalf. But he says, like you know, even if you don't like believe my words and believe my works like I've done these things right. why have you not why have you not gotten it right hmm. it's I mean yeah it's right there it's on display for you and um, but the same thing you know back in Exodus it was on display but if he hadn't turned aside it's I, I think there are I think there are things right in front of us on display that display hmm. that that we say well what about? It's right there. Right. Or, you know, my, I, I don't know, I'm kind of intrigued by, you know, can our own lives of faith become so ordinary that we fail to see new things that God is doing? Um, you know, I think uh, probably anyone who's watching today is probably someone who regularly attends church, and that's a fine thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably has a regular quiet time. Again, that's a fine thing. But... Um, it, are our routines uh, keeping our eyes closed? Uh, are we regularly putting our... Like, I guess, in a way, it was a risk 
for Moses to turn aside from watching the sheep, like us. You know, right. it's like, let's go look at something. This, it could be dangerous. It could be, uh, at the very least, it's, it's fascinating and beyond his comprehension. But, but he goes to it and then engages with it. It's that whole take off your feet, the ground on which you stand is holy. It's like he's encountering God. Right. He's in the presence he's of God. He's in the presence of God. God the Father. You right. Know? And, and here's Jesus saying exactly the same thing. Right. Don't you get it? The Father, I am in the Father. The Father, Father is, is in me. me. He's right here with you. I'm and, right here with you. And they've seen the miracles, but I. But again, I wonder. It's like they were with Jesus for a few years. They're just out doing the stuff, and I wonder if doing the stuff can become too ordinary that we fail to see Jesus for who He really is. Well, and as we look at this today, as we were reading these scriptures, these are all, I mean, like Exodus and the story of the burning bush, that's pretty, you know, that's a well-known story. Even the right. John story, and then Jesus says, you know, I am in the Father, he is in me. And, um, you know, those are those are stories that we would have heard if, if we were people who have been in church. These are stories that we would have heard. But even in the Hebrews passage, and, um, and through this, you know, it's, by faith, you know, there's so many things that had to happen for Moses to even be there. Mm -hmm. You know, he should have been murdered. Mm -hmm. He should never have even survived. But not only did he survive, but he was welcomed into Pharaoh's palace. Right. A daughter of Pharaoh. And then he has to have faith enough to turn away from everything the mm -hmm. world has to offer to him. Um, and it, as you go through, you have this whole litany of this is... By faith, this you know. By faith, he left Egypt. By faith, he continued to celebrate the Passover. By faith, um, the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho. By faith, Rahab. And these are all extraordinary events that happened in Scripture. Mm -hmm. But well known, well, yeah, the walls of Jericho, though. Yeah, the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about that, but when we really think about it, these are incredible things that right. happen, and we hear them, and we just, well, yeah. And it's just very offhanded. We know the stories, but do we really think about the, do we think about the role that God had in these? These are not things that right. could have happened without right. God being present in those moments. These could not yeah. have. Um, and, and so the familiarity we have with them uh, makes us miss out on the importance of them in a way. It's like, you know, we, yes, this whole chapter of Hebrews 11, um, you know, the, the heroes of the faith and all the, the different people, but there's this whole section, as you were saying, on Moses. Every one of these elements, what had to be happening behind the scenes? What had God been orchestrating? How did these things work out? But all of these things that are individually miracles, but all combined, make this miraculous story that God was ultimately responsible for, yet Moses walked into it. He was willing to go on that journey. And literally, it was a journey, you know, spending 40 years wandering in the wilderness, all these things. Right. That was 40 years after that event where he you know, was at the burning bush, and that was 40 years after he had been in Egypt and all of those things that you were talking about. Um, and do we do we believe that God works in our lives to that same extent today? Do we think that the various moments that we might consider ordinary, God is actually working towards an extraordinary, miraculous person purpose? Like you know, by faith, Natalie started a CLP course, and now and now she's completed. But that had been predicated by. Um, preceded by well, you know, Natalie becoming the children's director or you know, Natalie moving back to San Angelo from Houston, whatever it might happen to be. Right. Like all these various steps that we take that might not seem like that much in and of themselves do add up to a rather miraculous story. Right. Um, and so here we see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle and then we go, wow, but combined, what a huge right. miracle that is. And it's so funny you mentioned the moving back because if Billy and I, my husband, for those of you that are watching, <laughs> Billy and I, you know, when we were living it, trying to sell a house in the middle of a housing bust mm -hmm. and thinking we were moving to one city and then a job that we weren't looking for, literally falling into his job, um, the... Um, 
the rental agreements that we still had a house in Houston and we're trying to sign a rental agreement and it fell through, not mm-hmm. on our end, but on their end. But it's, you know, when we look back at all of the things that were happening in the, we were so frustrated and we were so, it was just, we just wanted to get this figured out and move forward with, you know, a new baby and, and, and if nothing, nothing is going the way that it should have gone. But it was going exactly. Mm. And all of those things had to happen in order to put us where we are. And so, you know, looking back, I definitely see that there were things happening that were beyond our control. Mm. And, and, and now we are very grateful for that. But in the moment, we were so frustrated and so put out. But I think we, we were missing it, mm. living in those moments. I think we were missing some of the opportunities that were being presented to us and, and, you know, I don't know, but you've got to stop and you've got to see it. And so, um, yeah, Mm. I think that it is in the ordinary that he does come to us. I mean, yeah. So I guess a couple things with that, like God does meet us in the ordinary and then there are sometimes that extraordinary things happen, but we need to have our eyes open to see them. Uh, and then to be obedient to what God's calling us to do in the midst of ordinary stuff that extraordinary things could happen. So it's just kind of this right. weird, it's this weird way. Like, it's like, God, why, why don't you make it more clear? It's like, oh, well, wait, I think he just did, right? Right, I'm, he shut that door. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this and I'm like, wait, well, that seems to be the way God works with even the heroes of faith. Right. Why would... Um, why would God not work that way in our own lives? It's, right. uh, and, I, and I do believe that he does. Uh, um, and I think this is why, you know, again, getting back into the different Psalms, it's, um, you know, the Psalms just with their today, they were a lot more on the praise side of things. These were a lot more along the lines of, you know, God has established the world and it shall never be moved. You know, do we really believe that? Or do we believe that um, if God can establish the whole world, can he not then establish my life right he can establish everything of course he can establish mine uh but do we have enough faith to trust him to do that are our eyes open to see that which he would have us to do and then when we do you know then our voices of praise are lifted to the lord then we really actually see um the things that he's doing um i know psalm 97 again this is let all of let all of creation, let all of, uh, excuse me, let all of the uh, different types of people uh, proclaim God's goodness. Uh, there are so many worthless things out there that eventually those are going to be uh, thrown down and destroyed. Um, but, uh, you know, light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. You know, I think the world can be a very, very complicated place. Uh, um, our ordinary lives can seem probably sometimes boring. It can probably seem like, well, day in and day out, I'm just doing these things. Um, you know, not to be morose or anything, but uh, it's the start of a new year. Everybody starts thinking about resolutions. What are things that I can do to to improve my life? Uh, and and we all know the statistics on how many people fail in their resolutions. Right. You know, I'm I'm working on trying to lose a little weight for uh, for for Rachel Ann's wedding that's coming up, and I'm like, you know, I I know I can do it, but will I be disciplined to continue that after, or is it just you know the short term kind of thing? Is my life truly going to be transformed, or am I looking for like a, you know, a cheap shortcut, whatever it might happen to be? Um, but uh, but it's the start of a new year. Uh, people want to do better, but we know a lot of times most people kind of get sucked back into that ordinary routine, sucked back into that right. rut. You know, I'm going to do so much better this time, and doing so much better is just so much harder than I thought it was, and so they give up and fall away. Um, but again, I think that the, the, the story of you know, Philip's question, Moses' response, it's, you know, show us the Father. I've been here. Right. So when I'm he does this. choose to reveal, do we respond in faith? Yep. Do we respond yep. in trust? Um, you know. Yeah. Every day is a new challenge, isn't it? Every day we have an opportunity to put into practice those things that God has called us to do, to walk in obedience, as the psalm would say. Um, and 
And let's just be honest, walking in obedience is really hard. It's, it's easier, uh, well, you know, I guess that's kind of a lie. It's not even necessarily easier to be disobedient because you still have your problems and right. then there's no hope of improving. <laughs> it's right. just, you know, obe- obedience eventually gets you to the place where you need to be. Whereas disobedience, you can just continue to stay in the place that you don't necessarily want to be. Well, I think with disobedience, we tend to fall further away. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I don't think that that's, it, it's not on the side of Christ. It's it's actions on our part because he is always there. Right. But with that disobedience, then we have that falling back or that turning away. And I think that's where um, we get into um, so many things that um, can become problematic. We, you right. know, that we somehow have more control than what we do. You know, mm. that we can control what's going on, or that we um, we say, "Well, look at all these good things that I have accomplished." And in reality, you've right. got Christ. That you've got all of those things being accomplished through Him. Right. Right, and the contrary side of that, you know, all worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast of worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. So, you know, disobedience to God does not result in true freedom. Disobedience to God, ultimately, you're still going to bow down before him. Right. Everything that you've put your faith and confidence in is going to be bowed down before the Lord. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, just what a... Um, you know, again, how how do we, yeah, how do we do those things? And, and I think it just has to be, it's because the Lord continues to give you strength to do so. You know, the, the Hebrews 11 shows that, you know, it's by faith, by faith in whom, by faith in God, that these good things was going to happen. And that's why he was able to do these things and see God at work. So, well, um, I don't know. Do you have anything else? I, I was, no, I think that's, that's it. Okay. So, yeah, right. I think that's it for today. Um. Yeah. You want to close us in prayer? Yeah. Sunday morning. You want to do that? Oh, so sure. Sunday morning. Things are changing a little bit. So right, right. We will. Let's not mess this up. So first <laughs> service is at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. And then we will have Sunday school from 9.15. No. 10.15. 10.15 to 11. And then second service will start at 11. 11.15. 11.15. Right. Okay. So let's try Maybe not. You okay, do this. <laughs> uh, let's let's recap. First service starts at nine. Sunday school starts at ten fifteen, and the second service starts at eleven fifteen. Um, I do believe that both services are going to be broadcast, um, and uh, the first service is going to be a bit more liturgical. The second service a little bit more streamlined, and so uh, everyone is welcome. You can come to both. I'll be preaching at both. Um, donuts in the commons in donuts between. Donuts in the commons right. in, in between. So come on to that and uh, let's see how God will engage us. Let's let's open our eyes even now. Let's open our eyes today. Let's not wait till Sunday. You know, right. come on Sunday, but don't wait till Sunday. Open your eyes, look around, um, see what God is doing, and then go and, and go and join Him in that. Yeah. All right. All right. Close us. Loving God, thank you for um, thank you for your words to us today. Thank you for this time together that we have in your word. And I pray that as we live out our daily lives, that we do open our eyes and that in that um, you would be revealed to us and that as you reveal yourself to us, that we respond in obedience and we respond in trust and we respond in faith, um, that we can live abundantly in you, that we can live out our lives in ways that glorify you and live out our lives in way that, ways that would be pleasing to you. Um, be with us and um, let us feel your presence. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a blessed day. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.